while his old girlfriends get used to prison stripes. Rebecca Hawk has been arrested by the Secret Service, and Allison Arnold is in prison. Gail McKenzie is the federal prosecutor in charge of the case. There was absolutely no regard for the over 100 victims that he left behind. <laughs> His girlfriend slash accomplices, he knew they had gone to jail. He just moved on with more and more fraud. In Nashville, Cox forms yet another fraudulent shell company, steals the identity of another homeless person, and starts dating yet another pretty young woman, a single mom, of course. <laughs> Fucking dickhead. She and Cox go on a whirlwind Mother trip fucker. to Venice and then Greece. Paid for, of course, with stolen money. And made possible by Cox's stash of fake IDs. You and I can't even get on a plane uh, without somebody looking at us uh, anymore. Matt Cox, uh, you know, the, at the top of the most wanted list, was able to create an ID that passed muster for him to get out of the country and back in. Maybe Cox has tempted fate once too often. Maybe it's karma catching up with him. But one night, he's back in Nashville relaxing at home with his girlfriend when two armed intruders break through his front door. Officer Cassandra Del Bosco responds, and Cox shows her a video taken from his security camera. You can actually see one lift his foot up and kick in the door. and. One of them's holding them at gunpoint, and then you see him getting all their property, and, and, and you see Cox, is, he's kind of mad. He's not really scared, he's mad. I was terrified. The thieves get away crazy. with the you girl terrified. Cox. Fuck yeah, of two what? fucking guys, two, of what? Oh, the, you're talking about when the two guys were actually Two fucking guys just you. kicked in my front fucking door with, with fucking guns. Screaming, get on the fucking ground and everything. I'm like, fuck. All I could think about was, what the fuck do you guys want? How do I get rid of these motherfuckers? I thought they were going to fucking, you know, I actually didn't. Think I think she were... said that she said you were mad when you were kind of explaining it to them or showing them the footage of what happened. You were no, mad I'm after sure. the point. I think I was mad during the foot. I was definitely, I probably looked mad, yeah. but I was scared. Oh, okay. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, what the fuck? You know, but I just look mad, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But trust me, fucking pure terror. Arm, jewelry, and $6,000 in cash. Cox files a police report under his alias. Like Joseph Carter, and we did run his DL. It, it was a valid Tennessee driver's license with his picture on it. We had no reason to believe it wasn't him. That's not the ID. Around the same time, the Secret Service gets a tip from a woman in Nashville. She's seen the most wanted poster. Trina. She thinks Cox is living in her neighborhood. No. The tipster. To Wait, Trina? Trina. Who's Trina? Trina's the chick that Amanda and I, my girlfriend, the single mother, were seeing. Mm. Remember? I remember The that. first pod podcast, 40. Yeah, I remember now, yeah. Trina. It's Trina. been a while. Yeah, yeah it has. Uh, so Trina, Amanda told Trina, Trina calls and turns me in. Fuck. That's, her mother was, they, they always say the baby, so a babysitter <clears throat> turned him in. The babysitter's mother or Trina's mother was the babysitter. Mm. She's the one that called. It's just stupid. It was Trina. Describes Cox to a T. Secret Service then gets in position to make the big arrest, and he's no longer there. Gone once again. This time, we were within two days of him. I can't tell you what a tremendous letdown that was. The day after, Officer Del Bosco gets a page. And I looked down on my computer and I noticed that the Secret Service had just sent out an email, please stay out of the area, we're looking for a fugitive. And I, I looked at the address and I thought, hold up a second, we just had a home invasion there two days ago and I talked to this supposed fugitive that they're looking for. Working with the Secret Service, the Nashville police create a ruse. They ask Cox to meet them for a follow-up report about the home invasion. Cox is so confident in his ability to fool everyone that he falls right into the trap. The Secret Service is waiting. Yes. Hey, Matthew, how you doing? He goes, you are Matthew Cox, aren't you? And I went, yeah, I'm Matthew Cox. And I mean, I remember my knees went weak just because I hadn't heard my name out loud in so long. After three years on the run, Matt Cox is finally stopped. 
He's taken a total of $12 million from banks and private lenders, and he's left behind more than 100 victims. Mm. Once in custody, he begins to talk freely to the Secret Service. He was very forthcoming in what he had done, but he was trying to sell to us, just like he had tried to sell to others, that there really are no victims. And that's what he wanted us to believe, that the, you know, the title insurance companies, that's what they're there for. You know, insurance companies pay policy, so really no one is hurt. Bridget Brown and her husband were conned by Cox at a time when they were caring for a sick child who was constantly in and out I mean, of the hospital. Certainly in our case, in a young family going through some stressful times, and he was aware of that. You know, we mentioned that getting to the closing was difficult for us because we had to find appropriate medical care. Never talked to her till the closing. Yeah, I think it was a pretty poor argument to say that this was a victimless crime. Never said it was a victimless crime. On either, April 10th, 2007, Matthew Bevan Cox pleads guilty to bank fraud. Mortgage fraud. Damn, and I do. They even got the short guy with the fucking. No, that's me. Is that actually that's you? Me. I thought this was B roll. <laughs> no. That's from the interview oh, with Dateline. Fuck. That's the interview with Dateline. Oh, I thought it was B roll. <laughs> fucking. Identity theft. He is later sentenced to oh. 26 years in No, I gotta watch that again. An identity theft. He is later sentenced to 26 years in federal prison. This fellow got what he deserved. He got a very stiff sentence in federal prison. And because there's no parole in the federal system anymore, he is going to spend a couple of decades plus. You're fucking wrong about federal that, custody. bro. I want to fucking 26 fucking years for some for some deterrent. fucking money. I mean, look, no offense. I'm not saying I shouldn't have done some time, but 26 fucking years. Are you fucking crazy? That's insane. That's an insane amount of fucking time. Yeah, it depends on who you ask, I guess. Well, I mean... <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> to people who might otherwise be inclined to commit this type of crime. Rebecca Hawk is sentenced to six years in prison. But she, she will be waves. eligible for release in 2009. Yeah. She got Matt her Cox's story up. has one more mystery. Mm. Five million dollars of his loot is still missing, leaving the feds Where wondering, yeah, where's million. the money? Six where's million. the money, Matt? Six million. Where's it buried? Um, yeah, it's, uh... I would love to know the answer to that question. <laughs> what do you mean? There's no money, bro. There's no money. There's no money. There's no money. There's no money. <sighs> it, it, you know, it hurts when you talk to me like that. <laughs> I, I think have feelings. The possibilities are limitless as to where he could have put the money. Cox's former girlfriends believe he may have an offshore account. If he does, it will be a long time before he's sipping margaritas on a beach. Hmm. Matt Cox's projected release date is 2029. Here we are in 2020. Where's the fucking money, Matt?